Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm so glad that you could join me again. So this week I wanted to kind of continue the theme of last week in autumnal decorating and I saw on TikTok a video where someone takes a pumpkin, takes off the lid and then they empty out the inside and make this like a vase for flowers. I thought that was a really nice idea so I'm going to attempt to do it now. Now the only problem I've had is trying to find a pumpkin. So I live in Edinburgh, in right in the middle of the, the city centre. I don't have a car anymore because I've found that I was walking everywhere. So sometimes I struggle to find things that I need in terms of groceries. Although we do have a few supermarkets in the middle of the city centre. They're usually smaller ones, which works well for me because I walk there every day, get what I need. But when you need something specific, it can be a bit of an issue. So finding a pumpkin has been that issue this week. I did manage to find this huge one, which is so beautiful, from my local organic store. But I'm just thinking that it might be a little bit too shallow. But I am going to try that out and see how it works. So I thought that that'd be fun to do together. So yes, I'm going to give this a go. Uh, I think it could be a very nice centerpiece for my dining table. And as with everything that I do here on this channel, this is the first time I've ever attempted to do this. I haven't practiced it before, so we'll see how it works out. It might not turn out very well, but usually what happens is that it does. So let's give it a go. Okay, so actually it's turning out to be easier than I expected. It's going in quite nicely, which is a good thing. <laughs> I sometimes think, why do I do these mad things here when I've never done them before? I mean, it could turn out to be a total disaster. But I think it's always best to do it uh, when I haven't tried it out before, because it's more genuine and authentic. So now that I've lined the pumpkin, I have filled it with water, as you've just seen. And if I'm totally honest, I would say that lining it with the foil was probably unnecessary. Um, it's seeping through the foil anyway. It's all around the edges of the foil, so probably not really going to do that much to protect the pumpkin. And it doesn't, it's not going to last that long anyway, so I would say skip the foil part. Just fill it with water with your chicken wire for structure. So now I've got these quite beautiful roses. Um, I would not normally pick this colour. I don't really like these orange bright and red colours of roses. I always like white roses or very pale white roses with green edges on them. Sometimes soft pink. I never would choose these but I thought it is an autumnal table setting and they are beautiful and it really does work well with this pumpkin. Now I did want to get some other bits of flowers and foliage as well, but the florist that I usually go to is closed for refurbishment. So this week I'm really struggling with supplies. So I am going to just go ahead, 
put these into here and then I'm going to go out and see what I can forage from my friend's garden. She said I can go over there and pick some things. So I am going to try that out. Uh, I'm just going to see how this looks. I might just leave it as is. So <clears throat> these are quite thorny. I've got my gardening gloves here. I'm going to go ahead and just start stripping back some of the leaves on here just by running my hands down. This makes everything so much quicker when you have these gloves and you can also, when you're doing that, remove the thorns. Now these are quite long stems. I am going to have to cut them down quite a lot. I do like to leave a leaf on if I'm arranging them in a vase, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that with these because you're not going to be able to see. They're going to be, they're going to be too long, so I'm going to have to cut them down quite a lot. So I'm just going to remove all of this and then trim them down to size. And hopefully this will look quite nice. So now I've removed all the leaves, I'm going to start cutting them down. So <clears throat> I always do cut them at an angle. So then you get a higher surface area for the flower to take in the water. And I'm just going to pop this in here. And because we have our chicken wire, it should stay pretty upright. No. <laughs> I think that is probably the right uh, length. I don't want any shorter. But what I can do is just keep, as I go along, just keep seeing uh, if I need to take down the length in anywhere, anywhere. But what I like is to have varying heights in arrangements like this so it doesn't all look too uniform. I don't really like perfect flower arrangements that you see in hotels, even though they are impressive. For me, I prefer a more natural look. So yeah, I think this is going to look quite nice. And I do think the chicken wire is a genius little hack because it just allows you to manipulate where you want each stem to sit and how it stands. Actually, I think if I just cut the stems a little bit shorter, it's going to look better. So these ones here, which are quite tall, if I just take these out, cut them down, and then we're going to fill the gaps a lot easier, more easily. It's just a case of experimenting and chopping and changing. And actually, I don't think I am going to bother adding anything else to this. It looks quite striking, the way it is, without anything else added in. <clears throat> it's not the type of arrangement that I would usually go for. Again, I like more wild things, but I have to say, I think because on my table, which I'll show you in a minute, you might have seen it last week on last week's episode, with the leaves scattered all around it, and then we've got some little pumpkins. It might look like a nice contrast to have this pretty flower arrangement, which is quite formal and together with the more relaxed look of the pumpkins and the leaves scattered around. So I think this is quite nice, actually. You can move it around. Play with it a little bit. But I think I'm going to stick with that.
I don't know about you, but when autumn and winter come, one of the things that I really crave and enjoy almost every day is soup. And that is one of the things that I've been having quite a lot since the season began. Now, a few weeks ago, when I attended the Bridgerton event, they served an afternoon tea. And as part of that, they served some cheese scones. Now, this is a little treat that I completely forgot about. I used to have them quite a lot when I was younger. My sister liked to make them. She once learned how to make them at school in cooking class, and then she was obsessed with making them. So they really remind me of her. And now when I have soup, I sometimes like to have bread, but when I'm trying to watch my figure and cut out the carbs, I don't. But when I do, I have some bread. But I was thinking about what else could I have to serve with soup, and then I remembered the cheese scones. So I thought that I would use my scone recipe, but adapt it slightly and make them cheese savoury scones. So let's make them now. So let's get started with making these scones. And I can promise you that they are so easy to make. If you've baked my sweet scone recipe, you'll know that. Everything that I like to make has to be simple, otherwise I can't be bothered with it. So these are easy and I promise you they'll turn out very well. So first of all, we have um, two cups of self-raising flour. Now, in my last video when I baked, one of my viewers asked why I wasn't just putting this directly into the jar, and that is because it doesn't fit inside. So that's the simple answer. I wish it did, life would be easier. So that is going straight into the bowl. I like to use a nice big round bowl. This one has a rubber bottom so that it stops it from moving around. Okay, that is our flour. Then we're going to add in a teaspoon of baking powder. This is just a guess. I'm going to add in a pinch of salt. And then I'm just going to put in some mixed herbs, just for a little bit of seasoning and flavour. And now I'm just going to mix these together so that they're fully combined. I think actually I'm just going to add in a little bit more of the mixed herbs. There we go. Now what we're going to do next, as everybody who watches this channel knows, is my least favourite part, is we're going to add in butter. And then with my fingertips, I'm going to combine this through this flour mixture until we have breadcrumbs. This is not my favourite thing to do. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> we have to uh, grin and bear it if you want to eat delicious things. Now that we have our breadcrumbs, I'm going to add in most of this cheese, but I'm also going to reserve some of it so that we can sprinkle it on top of our scones before we put them into the oven. So this is going to go in here. Cheesier the better, right? And then once again, I'm going to mix this through so it's combined. And I think these will be so delicious with our soup. Now, what I'm going to do now is move the flour around in the bowl to kind of create a well in the centre. Don't worry too much about this, just move the crumbs to the edges of the bowl with the, with the spoon and you'll have a little well in the centre. I'll show you now. Now I'm going to add in our milk, little by little, not using all of it. And then I'm going to use a, a spoon to bring this together. And I'm just going to bring it together slowly. Not adding too much. I'll add a little bit more. I think I'm going to have to use most of it. And then once it starts to come together in the bowl, we're going to use our hands once again to combine it all 
and make a ball of dough. So we have quite a nice ball of dough. As you can see, it came together really easily. Now what I'm going to do is just roll this out <clears throat> on a lightly floured work surface. It's a really nice dough, came together very, very fast. And what I'm going to do next is just use a cutter to cut the scones and I want quite nice big ones so here we go and these come out very well easily and I'm placing them on the baking sheet here good thing about these scones is that you can freeze them so that you can enjoy them whenever you want they're always a delicious snack, especially with soups. I think I'll probably get about six out of this, but that's because they're quite big. Um, you could make them smaller, but I think with a cheese scone, it's nice to have a generous size so that you can spread some butter on it um, and enjoy it with your soup. What I'm going to do now is just use an old paintbrush and brush them all with a little bit of milk. This will give them a nice glaze. And then I'm going to sprinkle on at the very end some of our cheese. And I think these will be quite nice. But we'll see. So yeah, I'm just going to sprinkle on some cheese. Haphazardly, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do it any way you can will melt off and into the scone and that is it. They're ready to go in the oven. They're going to go in the oven for about 12 minutes and that is our scone recipe. Perfect. After lunch, I decided to pop to my favourite bookstore to treat myself to a new book. It had been raining for the entire day, so once it stopped, I took the opportunity to get some fresh air. I chose a book called Timeless Paris by Marine Montagu. This is honestly probably the most beautiful book I've ever seen. Marin is an artist and boutique owner in Paris. I discovered him on Instagram a few months ago and was really looking forward to buying this book. It is filled with magic. I will put a link in the description here so you can check it out for yourselves. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode. I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, take care. Bye-bye.